Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. He's ours, all ours. He joins us weekly... The films are not. The films are the Academy Awards for 2020. His favorite topic. Hi, David. Hi, Joe. How are you doing this week? Fantastic. He's he's gone all awardy on us. I'm glad to hear. Well, you know, this is the thing. I always gripe and complain and say, you know, I think the Academy Awards are silly because I truly do think they are. But, you know, so many people take them so seriously or at least have so much fun with them that I do like to, from time to time, give them a little nod. And since we are right now in the uh, the sort of uh, winter silly season when not so many interesting new movies are coming out, some are coming out and we've talked about them in recent weeks. We'll be talking about them again. But I thought it might be a good week, especially since the Academy Awards are going to be announced in just a few days from when we speak. Uh, might be a nice time to uh, to just sort of look at the nominees and see what's going on, and I can give my curmudgeonly take on some of the categories. So that's what I'll do if it's okay with you. It's fine with us. We are grateful. <laughs> Go for it. Okie doke. Well, anyway, uh, uh, by and large, I, I, as always, uh, I'm not all that pleased with the list of nominees this year, uh, and uh, that, that, that's my sort of usual situation. Uh, so, but I don't want to be just sort of all that vague about it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just mention a few specifics here. First of all, uh, yes, as everybody knows, Joker has received the most nominees, the most nominations of any film in the cosmos with a grand total of 11. And I think that is preposterous. Uh, Joker is a well-made movie, and it has a a good performance. Not a brilliant one, a good performance by Joaquin Phoenix. But, you know, for a movie that I regard as sort of not really all that brilliantly made and not really all that brilliantly acted, and above all, that is just so kind of mean-spirited. It just has a sort of a nasty portrayal of New York City and and kind of a gratuitous gratuitous um, awfulness to it that, you know, it would be okay if it were nominated for maybe a couple of things, maybe in the technical categories, but for it to be of all the movies that came out in the entire year of 2019, the one to receive the most nominations just seems to be to be ridiculous. Uh, Now, other movies that came in second with 10 nominations apiece are a somewhat more uh, respectable uh, duo, uh, I, the, the Irishman particularly. Now, I do not think that The Irishman of one, is one of Martin Scorsese's very best movies. Uh, Martin Scorsese, I've been saying this for so many years, is the greatest living American filmmaker. He still is. The Irishman is quite an amazing accomplishment in some ways. It has some really excellent performances in it, and I, I, I kind of respect the deliberately plodding way in which it <laughs> unfolds its story over three and a half hours. Uh, it's uh, it, it's a movie of, of, of Scorsese's old age, uh, and I'm pretty old myself. I'm around Marty's age, so uh, you know I don't mean that as an insult. But it's a movie that moves at kind of you know the older person's pace, and I, I respect it for that. But it simply is not one of his great movies. It is certainly nowhere near on a par with Taxi Driver, which, by the way, is one of the great inspirations behind Joker. Uh, it is not even uh, as interesting an achievement as King of Comedy, another Scorsese movie that was a big inspiration behind Joker. Uh, It's not as good as any of Scorsese's best movies. That said, it's a very respectable movie. It has a superb cast. It has a lot of good acting. So, okay, it's fine that that gets gets a a lot of nominations. Uh, But still, you know, there are other movies that probably would have been better to be way up in the many, many, many nominations category. And then turning to Quentin Tarantino's movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is the other movie with 10 nominations. You know, it all again, it has a lot of technical merit to it, but it just boils down to being another one of Tarantino's revenge fantasies. He makes these revenge fantasies now. Sometimes he gets revenge on the Nazis and Adolf Hitler, or he gets revenge on the whole system of slavery and that horrific 
episode of America's history. Uh, this time he's getting revenge against the Manson family. Uh, but, but it, you know, it, it just boils down to that again. Uh, like The Irishman, like a number of other movies, it goes on way, way longer than it really should. And it just, aside from a very likable performance by Brad Pitt, it just doesn't have that many conspicuous merits. So I'm just going to recap here. It's preposterous that a movie as mediocre as Joker should, hey, it rhymes, a movie as mediocre as Joker should have uh, the most nominations of any movie and it's ridiculous that a film like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood should have the next most nominations it's okay for the Irishman to have all these nominations but uh, still it it seems lopsided Uh, and then we get to other movies that have multiple nominations Parasite I gotta spend a little bit of time on Parasite uh, the very very fine uh, South Korean movie from Bong Joon-ho you know it has been honored as best film of the year or one of the year's 10 best films by so many critics and so many organizations that the parade of uh, acclamation for this movie has really gotten boring. Uh, It's a very, very good movie. I put it on my 10 best list, but uh, not at the top. Uh, And again, you know, so anyway, it very well may win. I think it would be great if it won. I always think it's good when a movie with subtitles wins best picture. Actually, I don't think it's going to win. But if it did, at least it would be nice to see, you know, a movie from Asia and a movie with with subtitles and all of that, uh, you know, win. I really don't think that's going to happen. But at least it would be a really interesting and original and artistic movie that would be winning but then again it would just be adding another to this long list of honors that it already has so that leaves us with the remaining nominees Jojo Rabbit I think is a really interesting movie Uh, and uh, you know I would be perfectly happy if it won Best Picture I don't expect that to happen Marriage Story is a movie that you know again it's a movie that has people have been leaping upon its bandwagon for quite a long while now it's a very well acted movie Uh, I think that both Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson are getting overexposed. Uh, they just appear to be in so, especially Adam Driver, they appear to be in so, so, so much these days that I think audiences are going to get tired of them if uh, they don't start maybe being a little bit more selective about the projects they accept. And again, you know, it's lovely to see these energetic young performers doing so much work and using that energy in such productive ways. Uh, the thing about Marriage Story, I think that in certain ways it's sort of facile. It sort of makes cheap jokes and easy punchlines and little punctuations at the ends of scenes that I found a little bit gimmicky and that sort of thing. So I really don't think that it's quite worthy of Best Picture of the Year honors. Uh, I do know very, very much uh, that uh, the director of that movie, the writer-director, has gotten, uh, he's, there's a sort of a cult to kind of Noah Baumbach. They sort of worship everything that he does. And I think that's a bit overdone these days. It would not be a not respectable winner. Uh, but, you know, the final movie, Little Women, uh, Greta Gerwig directed that. She, again, has a cult uh, for whom she can do no wrong. And I think her first movie, Lady Bird, was very overpraised by the Greta Gerwig cult. Little Women is a very solid accomplishment with a true ensemble cast, a lot of good performances. And it is just a splendid example of totally classical filmmaking. It's filmmaking in the old Hollywood style. It's exactly the sort of movie with a few changes that one of the great studios would have produced in the years maybe maybe up through the 1950s and before that. Uh, so one of the reasons that I respect it is because it is just such a fine example of that old style of, of, of classical Hollywood filmmaking. And for that reason, I would be perfectly happy to see Little Women win. I actually think Little Women probably will win. And if it doesn't win, then I think Marriage Story would win. Out of all the nominees for Best Picture, the one that I think really ought to win is probably Parasite, even though, again, I think it's been winning too many awards already. Uh, That's the one I think deserves to win. I think that probably Little Women or possibly Marriage Story will win. But again, I don't really think that it's all that great a list of nominees. I want to mention now some of the movies of the year that I think should have been nominated for Best Picture, because I think that they are much better. And some of these are movies that most audiences have never heard of. And this is one of the problems with the Oscars, is that they are honoring the movies that have already been all over the place. They are not 
calling our attention to movies that maybe we would have missed because they're just not the kinds of films that get the gigantic releases with the gigantic ads in the paper. So let me mention a few of those movies. I'm going to mention Sword of Trust. This is a marvelous little independent American movie about some people who come upon a sword from the Civil War, so this antique sword. And it turns out to be about all kinds of interesting things that are so much in today's consciousness. It's about fake news, it's about conspiracy theories, and all of this in a sort of a gentle comedy drama. A little movie, a deliberately little movie made on a small budget without a big spectacular cast, and it is such an interesting movie that is so terrific to think about. Why wasn't that nominated for Best Picture? Because most people have never even heard of it. It didn't get the big Hollywood push when it opened, and so it's not getting the big Hollywood would push now in the Academy Awards race. Uh, I'm going to mention A Hidden Life, the movie by Terrence Malick that opened during this past year. Terrence Malick is a true philosopher of film. Uh, he was about to become a philosopher when he suddenly changed courses in his earlier career and decided to become a filmmaker. Uh, he is a terrific movie he is a movie maker. He is somewhat controversial uh, because some people consider his movies to be pretentious. Yeah, you can accuse A Hidden Life of that, by the way. Uh, it's still around, and I hope people seek it out. It's about a man who refuses to fight when he is conscripted into the Nazi army during World War II. Uh, and uh, it is about his conscience and about his sticking to his conscience, no matter what the conscience consequences for him. It's a marvelous movie. And among other things, it is about as visually gorgeous a film and audio visually gorgeous. The, uh, the soundtrack is magnificent as well. As gorgeous a film as you're going to see in a very, very long time. Certainly the most gorgeous movie, just in terms of sheer physical beauty to open in 2019. And so, you know, I think that would have been a terrific nominee and even winner for Best Picture. Speaking of gorgeousness, the great uh, fr fr French filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard came out with another film this year. The guy is going into his 90s and still making astoundingly great films in his movie The Image Book. Now, it's totally avant-garde. It's totally unconventional. It doesn't even try to tell a story. That's not what it's there for. It's there to combine images from the whole history of film into a sort of a seamless, magnificent, poetic pattern. But boy, what a movie by one of the great, great, great filmmakers of all time. And it would have been nice to see that thing get nominated for something here or there. So a little bit more conventional now. Uh, how about The Laundromat? A terrific Steven Soderbergh movie about, uh, about machinations in the financial world. Uh, not nominated for Best Picture. Uncut Gems, the terrific movie uh, by Josh Safdie and Benny Safdie with a terrific performance by Adam Sandler. There would have been one. Uh, in the international category, how about Bai Gan's Chinese movie, Long Day's Journey Into Night? An amazing, amazing uh, achievement. Uh, again, uh, I'm not expecting to see any of these things get recognized for much of anything. Uh, and, uh, of course, they're not even in the running for things. So it's just too bad. Uh, turning to a couple of the other categories, I'll just give some of my favorites. You know, uh, The Two Popes has uh, done very well in the acting category, and I think that both of its main actors, Jonathan Price and Anthony Hopkins, are more, more, more than deserving of major honors, and I would be really, really happy uh, to see them. They're both nominated, interestingly, for, uh, for uh, uh, Jonathan Price is nominated for, for, for Best Actor, and um, Anthony Hopkins is nominated for Best Support. Actor. They're actually co-equal roles, and I think it's an arbitrary division. But I would be very, very happy to see either one of them win uh, the, the actor awards. Although, um, you know, the, the, the acting in The Irishman is really, really terrific. Uh, turning to the female side of, of the equation, um, I really do expect that Shorsha Ronan might win for Little Woman, Women, and, you know, that would be good. Uh, Symphony Erivo is uh, a big contender for Harriet, largely because of the terrible, terrible scandal of the way African-American achievements are not recognized in Hollywood at all, and that includes at Oscar time. I think Harriet is a very, very disappointing movie. I do not think she gives a distinguished performance in it. So just for the sake of equality, no, I would still myself uh, vote for Saoirse Ronan over Little Women. Uh, but then again, uh, some of the other women are pretty good, at least in the movies they're in. I think Bombshell is a terrible movie, but Charlize Theron is pretty good in it. Uh, Judy is an okay movie, and Renee Zellweger is quite good in it. Uh, so, you know, they would be okay. And finally, turning to the supporting uh, roles there, uh, Richard Jewell is a movie that's not going to get much in the way of Academy Awards. Uh, 
uh, Clint Eastwood's latest movie, but Kathy Bates is absolutely wonderful in it, and she is my flat-out favorite uh, for the, um, the the supporting uh, act- actress role. So anyway, those are a few of my sort of rushed uh, ideas about the race. Yes, uh, I think it would be great if some of the African-American achievements that have managed to sneak onto one list or another would manage to win, but I think that what Hollywood really needs to do is to start being way, way more proactive in promoting actual minority opportunity throughout the year and not trying to make up with it simply with a few token Oscars at the end. So that's my that's my feeling about that situation. Anyway, the Oscars are going to be given out in just a short time, a few days after I speak, and we'll see how it all turns out. Uh, just as long as Joker doesn't win with any kind of a sweep, I won't be too terribly unhappy. So that is my somewhat curmudgeonly story this week, Joe. For which we thank you. May we have the envelope, please? David Serrett, Films in Focus, the films, the 2020 Academy Awards. Mm-hmm.